Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Yo, welcome to this session on navigating your learning path in tech. Um, you're all welcome, and um, the purpose of this session is to give you an insight on how to get the right resources, um, knowing how to um, put your step and um, navigate your way, choosing the right track, the right step to take, to take and um, to achieve your goals. So um, most times you normally you want to pick a track or you want to start your career and take, you might have started a long time or you're just starting. But along the line, if you do not have a particular way of going or a step you want to follow, you may not be able to achieve that goal. So the purpose of this um, session is to um, give you the right guidance and um, to let you know how to um, how to map your way, your steps to get to achieving your goals. Then um, getting to know the right resources to use and um, getting to know how to set your goals and achieve your goals. So um. For the first, um, we're going to have two speakers speaking to us on navigating our learning path in tech and also goal setting. For the first person, we're going to have um, Paul speaking on how to navigate your learning path in te tech. And um, we'll have another speaker telling us on how to um, set our goals. So let's welcome um, Paul to give us a talk on how to navigate your learning path in tech. Yes, so while we wait for um, our first speaker, Paul, to give us um, a talk on how to navigate your learning path in tech, um, I'm sure a lot of you might have a lot of questions on how to um, get the right steps to achieving your goals and um, knowing the right resources to um, use and how to use them. Because for instance, you might, have to set in your steps, but you need to know how to get the right resources to use. You might have um, you have to know the right resources that works for for you and other things. So I would advise everyone to please pen down their question to the um first talk. You can ask the speaker, and he will do justice to your questions. Thank you. I'm Paul. Paul, you can you can start now. Thank you. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, you can. Go on. All right. Thank you very much. Sorry for the day. I was trying to set things up on my end. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, my name is Paul. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, can you can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay. Great. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul Basalu. I'm a student at the University of Lagos. I'm currently majoring 
in computer engineering in my fourth year. I am a back-end developer. I currently work part-time as a back-end engineer for a startup and I do technical writing every now and then. In this session, I'll be talking about the art of gathering resources. And in this part of the things that I'll be talking about is how you can help yourself to find resources to scale up. So like, I think part of the things you mentioned are the host, I don't, pardon me, I don't know your name. So I, I yeah, think part um, of the things- Yeah, I'm Hafsa Anibaba, Hafsa. Sorry, what? Hafsa Anibaba, you can just call me Hafsa. 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 Is that right? Hafsa, okay. Pleased to meet you, Hafsa. So part of the things you mentioned is, uh, how you can find resources you are looking to learn a new technology maybe you're just getting into tech or you're already in tech but you're looking to learn something new or add some new things to your stack how do you go about finding resources you know to actually learn those things so that's pretty much what i'll be talking about in this session it to be quite brief so let's just get right into it yeah, so part of the things you want to consider is I've listed out some of the things that you want to, you have to consider or that you should consider. Uh, one of the first thing on the list here is you need to identify your learning pattern. So what works for you? Do you prefer books to videos or do you prefer shorter written content like articles, right? So this is actually quite important because uh, I, well, from my own personal experience, it could it could even be hybrid. Perhaps you prefer books, some books, and then you prefer videos too. So it could be it could be hybrid. You need to figure out what works for you. It, it could be a, a hybrid of those things, a mix of all of everything: books, videos, articles. Uh, for some, it's videos. For other people, it's books. I have a friend that prefers to read books, C plus plus books from start to finish, videos are boring for him. Sometimes I find videos that way, but not all the time. So I like to watch videos too, and I use books as well. So that's the first thing I feel like you should cross off your list. Try and figure out what your learning pattern is. Then the next thing you'd also want to do is to ask a close acquaintance, someone with experience preparing me for help. So what do I mean? What I mean here is uh, you're looking to say you're start, you're just starting, you know, pro to learn how to write code, and perhaps you know someone or you, a friend, maybe in your department, or it could be a family member, someone you're close with that you can ask for help. Hey, I'm looking to learn this. I'm looking to learn that. I have interest in this. I have interest in that. How do I get started? What tools, what books did you use? And then where do I learn this? Where do I learn that? Asking the right questions will help you avoid unnecessary, unnecessary stress because they've gone through everything you are going through. So they can just point you in the right direction instead of you having to start scavenging for resources on the internet on your own. And that could take a while. It could also be depressing. Next thing is to leverage on a community that you might be a part of. If you're not part of any community, consider joining one. As of, it's, not, it's not mandatory, of course, but part of what's happening here today is because of a community. And um, I suppose, yeah, I suppose we'll be learning a thing or two from this, from events or programs like this. Uh, DSC, GDSC is currently holding a study session, study groups, and they have a number of tracks, back end, front end, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So if you're already a part of the community and you have like a group chat where you people talk, you can always put the question out to the group chat. Hey guys, I'm looking for resources on how to learn stuff. Maybe how to be a REST API, or you want to learn Go. What books have you guys read that actually helped you? You know, I prefer books. Ask those questions on the group chat. Again, you are still 
it's all about asking the right questions. And last but not least, is to do a book first search. So yeah, Google is everyone's friend. Uh, you could as well just go straight to google.com and put your question on there. Uh, you want to learn how to read a website or what is front end development? What does back end mean? You can of course put all those things on the internet. But the problem with doing a brute force search, and that's why it's last on my list, is because if you start with the brute force search and you know you get there's a plethora of information on the internet and it depends on how you word your your whatever your whatever you put into the search box you know seo using using the right keywords comes to play here because if you don't use the correct keywords or you don't use the right keywords you could get articles or posts or results that are not necessarily what you want so there's that issue there's also the issue of um you know on that perhaps okay for example here's an example i don't know some of us here might be students you are taking a course and there's a recommended textbook and all of that but you're not guessing what the textbook is saying but there's another textbook that you actually do get or maybe there's a video that you watch that helps you to understand it there's a problem of understanding and from all of that information from all the search results that you get you have to start finding going from one link to the other to find which one actually answers your question. There's someone I know that does something fancy. And when when he does this Google search, it's not like he told me, but I figured, figured it out. It's probably on this call. So what this guy will do is when he does a Google search, he, and I actually learned that from him because it makes sense. As I've explained, you might not find your answer immediately when you do a Google search. So what it does is, from the, when Google searches something from the list of results that come on. So the naive mistake that I do make is when I do something like that, first just click the first link that comes up, just click it and open first. Then I read that after like a few minutes of reading, I see that ah, this article is actually shit. Then I go back and start looking for the next one. So but what this my guy does is he will just hold control and click one to open the link in another tab opens like three different results. So it doesn't have to just start going back, you know, checking a new one, go back, check new one. It opens like two, three on the go. Not me though. Well, not on three. I saw that at, at the very least. Now I don't do that anymore. Sometimes I still make that mistake, but you know. Yeah, so these are the four things you have to first of all consider. You know, when you're just starting to you're looking to learn a new technology, you're looking to learn something new. These are the things you have to cross. Ask, ask yourself these questions. What works for you? Ask people for help. And lastly, you can do it before search if you haven't found the answer that you're looking for. Please, if at any point in time I'm not audible enough, please let me know. Okay, we can hear you clearly. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's get down to the specifics. So in the next couple of slides, I'm just going to be uh, talking more part of the things that I said and showing you some examples. So yeah, learn how to use search engines effectively. It really is as simple as typing the right keyword, as I mentioned. So we are looking to deploy a Flask application onto Heroku. I maybe not here, but that's too common. You are looking to deploy a Flask application to maybe uh, Microsoft Azure. And you, you go to Google how to deploy a Flask application. There's quite a number of ways to deploy Flask applications. You will get just as many results as um, you have defined in your search terms. So you want to be as specific as you possibly can. If you are going to ask Google for something, use the right keyword so that you get the right results. You know, or you get results that are prioritized in accordance to your search terms. So here's an example. 
here, I say deploy fast app to digital ocean. So you can notice the two keywords here, deploy and digital ocean. I'm looking to deploy to digital ocean, and that's why part of the first results that I get are uh, articles or posts that include the keyword digital ocean because that's actually what I'm looking for. So you want to try and you know close in on your search space as much as you possibly can. Try, don't be too generic with your keywords when you are searching on Google. There are other tips and tricks that you can use. There are certain shorthand that you can use within the search box. This session doesn't cover that, but uh, if you want more information on that, you can just maybe I'll send a link in the chat in the chat later on. Yeah, so another thing you want to consider using is YouTube. YouTube is like Google for videos, and part of the things I mentioned earlier on is you trying to figure out how best for you. It could be videos, it could be books, it could be articles. If you are a video person, then YouTube is one place that you should definitely try out. So one thing I've noticed with some people is that the uh, if someone is I, I spoke to someone recently that like, you know interested in data science and all of that stuff, and it was like yeah he's about to pay thirteen k to some I don't know some agency that that wants to teach him data science beginners course all of that stuff. Sounds great and all of that, but have you? Check YouTube at all. Have you searched on the internet on how you could possibly learn this skill? Because I'm not exactly sure that there's anything they would want they would teach you there that doesn't already that doesn't already exist as a video or some resource on the internet already that you can consume for free. I think the majority of them. So yeah, you can just go on YouTube, search for videos, you know. There are some you could use the filters as well. Some of them have like playlists. You know, a lot of us are self-taught developers, and some of us didn't have to pay for full courses. You know, to learn what we needed to learn. It might be quite rough. You know, trying and that's what this session is for to help you figure out how you can find resources. You might need to do so. Just like Google, you would get. A ton of you know results when you search. So you watch one. Part of the things you could do is before you start opening one video and opening another video, Sorry. you try the trick that my friend. Hello. Yeah. Um. Something you said about YouTube. I'm watching YouTube videos. Well, if you get stuck at one point, would you ask for help? Okay. You get stuck. Yeah. 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 I can hear you. When learning. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you hold your question to the end of the session? No problem. I'll answer your question. No problem. Yeah. No problem. Thank you. Thanks, man. Yeah. So, uh, you you get a ton of resources, you know, of course, just like a Google search. Uh, what you could do is what my friend does. That guy I spoke of again. Open multiple tabs before you start clicking and opening one of them. Another thing you could try doing is looking at the stats of the videos. How many views do they have? How many likes? So it, it has become common practice for some people. I don't know if everyone does it, but what, what I do is first of all go to the comment section. Does the person get positive feedback on the video? Are people saying, Hey, good job! I love this video. You know, this is this is the best thing I've seen, or nobody else has explained this concept. You know, when you see things like that, you're like, wow, okay, this guy probably knows what he's talking about before you actually start watching the video. Those are some things that you could try. Um, yeah, you also look at the stats. You know, and regardless of all those things that they said in the comments or about the stats, you still might not get it. So. That's why there's a lot of videos. You could watch one. If you don't get what this man is saying, what's the second guy? What's the third guy? You still don't get it. Ask your friend for help. You know, it's part of the things I mentioned from the start. You should always ask around for help, even before you even start checking for videos. Someone might recommend a video that works well for them. You know, that could also work for you. Another 
uh, place where you could gather resource is uh, online course providers. On sites like Udemy, Coursera, Udacity, and a lot more other ones, they offer um, paid, free and paid courses. Some of them operate on freemium model, or some strictly paid. Some offer paid, uh, free courses as well. So the beauty of um, online course providers is that you can take, there's a structure, you can take the course at your own pace, and there's also like a structure. While all of the information that you get on the internet or on YouTube uh, might be plenty, they are scattered. The majority of them are not in a particular order. So you have to start scavenging. Okay, you find A here, where do you find the next video? This guy probably doesn't have a playlist, or it has a playlist, but the playlist has a bunch of other unrelated stuff inside of it. You know, YouTube is great, but there's that caveat. It has its pros and it has its cons. But with course providers, these guys have sat down to create, to curate, you know, a syllabus, and then they make videos on those on the course content. Some of them have like, uh, what do they call these things? They have um, test sessions, so you've taken chapter one, you've learned how to, you know, print a little world, then the next, uh, you, in order for you to cross over to the next chapter, you have to take a short test to show sure that you, you, are, you are following the course well. So there's all of that stuff, all of that pampering is, in, it comes with, you know, these online course providers. And if that's, you know, something that you would want to do, you could definitely look at investing in a course uh, from any of these people here. Here's a fancy quote I came up with. If you can spare a couple nairas or dollars, these are sure to help you. And here's an example. This is, this is a popular site called Udacity. And as you can see, you have a number of courses. There are categories for the courses as well. So you can easily search through, unlike YouTube, that the information is scattered and you have to search by keyword. Then you have to start checking whether people like this video or people didn't like the video, all that kind of stuff. You don't have to do all of that when you are using a course provider. Another beautiful place where you can find resources is uh, blogs. You can check for how tos. There are in-depth articles on blogs. There are 11 minute articles, 15 minute articles, you know, it could be longer for you, but you know, that's just what they put there. Some of them are very, very much in depth. Some speak them across like three different posts talking on a particular concept. You know, blogs have evolved quite a lot over the years. And there's a lot of, you know, information that you can find on blogs like Dev.to, Hashnode, FreeCodeCamp and others. The beauty of all of this is that uh, you get them for free as well. And here is me searching for how to do multi-threading on FreeCodeCamp's blog. As you can see, I get a number of you know, articles that have been written, with, you know, that has that keyword in it here. And also brings me back to that point of using the right keywords when you are searching for content, not just in Google, but in any searching uh, system that you find. So you could also find uh, information on community forums or workspaces. DSC, GDSC has one. They have a Slack workspace. There's also a WhatsApp group chat. So if you join the GDSC, you get to uh, meet with a lot of people. People who've had experience, people who are there, where you are looking to be, there are people who are there already that you can reach out to and ask them what their experience was like, ask them to recommend resources to you. Uh, keep in mind that when they do recommend resources to you, uh, you may or may not like it. <laughs> so th they recommend a book to you that they found interesting. Yeah, but people are different and people read things different. People are seeing things differently. If I like a video or a, a book, doesn't mean it would work for you. So at the end of it all, you still have to find what works for you. 
So, but the importance is that you don't have to start looking for information from scratch. So, as much as there's a lot of information on the internet that you can just Google or do a YouTube search for, there are a lot of people on this um, community forum, group chats, workspaces, who have had similar experiences and can share a number of resources with you. So, recently, okay, before I even go into that, so maybe so you ask for a resource on Flask on a group chat, somebody sends you one, a person could send you like two or three, someone like me now, I could send you like two or three, other people could send you one, but by the time five people send you resources, you definitely find one that you know, best suits you. There's a number of uh, platforms that these communities use. So by communities, I also do, I'm not just talking about student communities, I'm also talking about communities that are built around certain languages, certain frameworks, or perhaps a, a particular product. Um, for example, the Python community has a Discord server that they are on. Class community has a Discord server that they are on. Fauna has one. AppSmith has one. Those two, last two that I mentioned are communities that are built around the product. If you don't know Fauna or AppSmith, it's totally fine. It's just, you know, they, these are products that people, developers use and they created a community. Uh, on which you can go there and ask for, you know, how do I do this? How do I do that? This I'm getting these errors and all of that stuff. You know, finding resources isn't just limited to you learning something and new. You could also be trying to find a resource that will help you fix a bug, and that's why these kind of uh, platforms are very, very important. So yeah, be free, feel free to join these platforms and reach out to a fellow. Here is me uh, on the Fauna community on Slack. I was asking a question about GraphQL, you know, something, something about their API, and someone was kind enough to respond. And look at the amount of information that he had inside his response. You know. So, yeah. Last but not the least, is this the last? Okay. Try joining a boot camp. Join join the boot camp. A number of boot camps are available for you to join. Uh, the ALC Google Africa uh, Developer Community Pico Camp has one. So uh, boot camps are basically schools for for you to learn tech, uh, technologies. So if you are new, this is. This would probably be best for people who are new to tech. So if you are new and looking to learn something, if you don't want to be a self-taught developer, you can always enroll in a boot camp. You know, there's a number of them. The, uh, the majority of them are virtual. Oh, well, the ones I have listed here anyways, some of them are in person. Uh, here's an example, Google Africa the Developer Scholarship. I don't know if this is currently open. So if you ask me, I won't be able to tell you. <laughs> but I think they are already, I don't know, I think they are already in special for this year. I don't know if that places are still open, but you can definitely ask um, people around you. If you ask, I'll have to ask somebody. So. <laughs> yeah, so here, the, the, these are just references to some of the things I mentioned. Of course, the link to this slide will be available. I will send the link after this session. So you can check all of this out for yourself. You know, references, blogs, course providers, boot camps, and a couple of other stuff. So here, yeah, that's it for me. If you want to reach out to me, you can, if you have further questions on programming or this session that you may be out of context, you know, you can reach out to me on Twitter. If you have questions, you can, you can always ask, you know, about this session anyways, after. Yeah, I think I'm done. <laughs> you can always ask now. Um, thank you, Paul, for this presentation. It was really insightful. So you've taken us through the steps of 
navigating a path in tech and one of the things you said is first to identify our learning path, knowing what works best for us. Then we should also try to find people we can ask questions and join in. We should also join communities that where we can see people that can give us um, information and also help us to um, get the right resources or get good in, um, the right information. Then your, another thing you said also is for us to also make sure we're able to search for um, issues with my face by using keywords. So thank you very much for this insightful, uh, insightful presentation. And I'm sure everyone here has been love from this presentation in the Jewish within this short period of time. So I'll leave the floor open for questions now. If you have questions, you can type them in the chat box or you can um, just indicate in the chat box you want to ask, ask a question and I'll, I'll give you the floor to ask questions. Yeah, someone was asking a question earlier. Could you, whoever that was, you can ask again. I don't think I recall. Yeah, yeah, it was me. Yeah, I already got the answer. Oh, okay. okay. You said something about if you don't, if you don't get it, you can ask your friend or something. Something like yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. If you don't get uh, through YouTube. Yeah, if you don't get through YouTube, YouTube you can ask yeah. people for, for yeah. help. Or yeah. just keep searching. Uh, yeah. You should also, if you're not part of the community, you should also consider joining one. It really, it will really help you because there are plenty, plenty of people, you know. Yeah. DSC has over, I don't, let me say why I don't know, but I'm guessing it's about 2,000 people in the community or students are like, you know, that you can ask questions. Mm -hmm. from How do I get through the, through the community or community? How do you join? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the lead will be talking after this. Okay. I probably send you, send a link to the group. Mm -hmm. to, for, to register. Mm -hmm. the but the guest lead will be talking about me. So if you have questions about the community itself, you can ask. Okay. So Thank you. you. I'll send a link to register okay. to the chat. Okay. Okay. Right, well. So we have some questions on the. Um, on the um, chat, the first question is, how can I join a community? Okay, uh, so, sorry, is it the community or a community? Yeah, a community, probably just okay, any community. community. Oh, okay, so, uh, Hello? Yeah, Paul, we can hear you now. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. So you might need to do some asking around. <laughs> but if you know them, if you know people that are part of the community, you can just ask them to show you how to join. You might need, you might need to do some asking around. Okay, uh, do you know uh, this community? Have you heard of these guys? Look around for people who have stickers on their laptops, anything, Python, those guys probably know. <laughs> Or two. So if you, are, if, you are, if you are looking for a community to join from scratch, that might be uh, one way to join. You know, look for local communities that you can be a part of. Those might be the easiest ones to find and join. Uh, if you are also like already a programmer, you, um, maybe you write Python or C++. Try looking out for if you go to like their um, website, for example, go to Python.org, go just look on the website for anywhere that has like a Discord, Slack channel, or like a contact us page or whatever, where you can actually join you know, that community. And like uh, the one I showed you from Pona is on their website, so you can just for the links to join their communities from their website.
you're already a programmer. Uh, I think another option would be to, I believe, the two, uh, well, I say biggest, I don't want to say biggest, but you could also just do a Google search. So, but look out for Google, Google yeah. Community Developer Communities, GDSC. Those ones are global. There's also Microsoft Microsoft Tech Community. They are also global. You could also consider applying to become a student ambassador. If you don't have a community already, maybe on your campus, you can create one. You know, you can start the whole thing. Just create communities. That's a whole different topic, but those are ways that you can get involved in the community or be a part of and creating one from ground up. Hopefully that answered the question. Okay, um, yeah, that answers the question. Thank you. So another question we have is, what do you think about using a roadmap as a learning guide? What do I? What do you think about using a roadmap as a learning guide? I didn't, I didn't get that. Though. What do you think? about using a roadmap as a learning guide. Can you hear roadmap. me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. What do I think yes. about using a roadmap? Yeah, it's, it's, a learning guide. it's very important. Yeah, it's, it's important, it's classy. If you ask me, <laughs> when I started out, I didn't have a roadmap. That's probably why it took me longer to learn than I, I had to learn. But yeah, I think part of what the uh, chief is going to be talking about is you know, setting goals, you know, around like your roadmap. You have this week, so you you could you could even see some people on maybe social media. You see a hundred days of code, fifty days of code. You know, the important thing is being consistent. Even if you have a roadmap. Try and be uh, as consistent as you possibly can. So don't just go halfway. See it totally. And roadmaps are very, very interesting to follow. And I think there's a website, roadmap.sh, I think, where you can find roadmaps for different, you know, roles, different um, learning paths, backend develop, back development, front end development. All of these things have roadmaps. And if you look at it, part of the things that I mentioned with the cost providers is, and, and it is, it's, it's like an edge over doing like brute force search, searching YouTube, searching Google. Is the fact that they have syllabuses, they have roadmaps. So it keeps the content structured and not just any how structure, structured in the way that you progress, you won't put things that are like prerequisite afterwards. You put prerequisites first so that when you're learning A, it makes sense when you're learning B that you're using what you learned in A and it progresses that way. So your roadmap should be uh, be consistent with it. Also, try and use a roadmap that makes sense so that your learning progresses. Yeah, so the roadmaps are awesome, yeah. Okay. Um, there is one more last question. It states, as someone who is new to tech, how do you choose what staff to start with? As someone with new to tech, how do you choose what to start with? What stack? Okay. Okay. So, in my experience, the uh, uh, you have to figure out what your what you want from programming. So, for some people, they are just intrigued by the whole idea of seeing, you know. This weird, <laughs> like my sister was talking about one day. I just survived her talking about that. So like <laughs> this weird font, <laughs> not those are text, <laughs> colored text that they're writing. You know, some people are just intrigued by that kind of stuff. Like, wow, this this seems cool. For others, it's more they are switching. They are they are. Uh, it's more like a career choice. So if it's a career choice, you have to first of all. Figure out because programming is broad. There's a lot of things that you could do programming, you could do game development, you could be a front end developer, you could do back end. Do research on the fields that are available 
you know, first of all, do research on those fields. Figure out what draws your interest the slightest. So this sounds more interesting than the other. So the reason I'm saying this is because I feel like regardless of where you're coming from, if you're just genuinely interested in, I'm not discrediting people who people think it as a career choice or something, but whether if that's just what drew your attention to in the first place, or you are taking it up as a career choice, first do that. There will be something that draws your interest in the slightest, even though you know nothing about it. In fact, your interest has already been drawn to the fact that you are asking the question already. Just do that, figure out what fields are available in programming space, and whichever one draws your interest in the slightest, look out for what tools or what languages are prominent in that space. So here's what I mean. Say I'm just starting out now. What I would I would do? This is not what I did when I started. With me, I just started learning Python out of the day. Was it even Python? No, it was HTML. I started with. Then I started learning Python. It was wild. But what I would do now is just do a Google search. You know, uh, for programming fields or fields in you know computer programming. You see a bunch, a list of things. You know. The majority, uh, the don't let me say anything about what you see, Shah, but stay and I'll just pick front end development, right? Because front end development drew my interest. So I would now do a search for, you know, tools that is for front end development or tools, yeah, tools that is for front end development. So you see things like HTML or what do I need to learn front end development? You see things like HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So that way, you avoid learning things that are not necessary to what you actually want to do. So like I said, when I started, I started learning HTML, CSS. Uh, I didn't think I learned JavaScript. I wasn't, because currently now I'm a back-end developer and I use Python, but when I started out learning front-end tools, which was a waste of time, well, maybe not entirely a waste of time because no knowledge is a waste, but it doesn't directly help what I currently do now because uh, that time that I spent gallivanting on doing just learning stuff, you know, that are necessary to what I was actually interested in, I could have just started learning Python from this onset. So if someone if there was someone that was, that told me that this is what I have to do, search for things I'm interested in and learn tools that are relevant to that track. You know, it would have been much smoother. It would have been a much smoother experience for me. And I think that's what you should do when you want to start. So first, check for those fields. If you already have one that you are interested in, do a search or use what <laughs> use part of the things I mentioned here because doing a search is like should even be like last of you. Just ask people around you. That's if you already know what you want to do. Ask people around you what are the tools that are popular in what what people use to do this. So in data science, people mostly use Python for it, Julia, uh, R. These are the popular tools. Someone that is looking at it, using this as a career choice, you know, will look at tools that maybe the companies that they hope to work with are using and learn those tools so that you'll be employable. The reason I'm saying this is that a lot of programming languages, they are multi-purpose. They can do almost anything, but they might not be the preferred tool in the industry for maybe data science. For example, Python can do front end, but it's not the preferred tool for, for front end. I don't think hardly the US is rare when you see anybody that asks you to write front end using Python. So pick what pick the track that you're interested in, you know, ask around for what the relevant tools are and then learn those things. That's what will actually help you uh, if you are if you're just you know uh, getting started. The, then also don't limit it. You can always switch tracks. Uh, I mean, you can switch tracks. You can also add more things to your stack. Don't be a boring engineer. Learn things also because you're just interested in it. You know. Learn other things. As, in as much as you're learning things that are relevant. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how I put this. Be open to learning new things, yes. Yeah. Or the that's it. <laughs> Hopefully that answers the question.
Yes, thank you, Paul Club. Yeah, we're going to just to all the questions. We really appreciate them. We've learned so much from you this afternoon. Thank you. Yes, thank you for having me. Yeah, so we'll move uh, on to the next speaker that's um, GDB Ray to give us a talk on goal setting. Hello, everybody. Yeah, can I, can anyone hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, so hello, everyone. Uh, my name is um, GDB Ray, and I am the GDSC lead and the community lead for this this current session. So can, I want to confirm that everyone can hear me clearly. Yeah, yes, yeah, we can, can hear you. you. Yeah, sure. So um, before I go into my own um, topic, I was meant to talk about um, goal setting and how it can help you in your learning journey. I'll first of all like give you some kind of like um, workshop session on what Paul just talked about, about finding resources. So he made mention of, um, he made mention of using like um, tutorial platforms like Udemy, Udacity, uh, uh, Coursera to look for courses you want to learn and then learn them. So we will just, um, I'll just show you about Coursera. So Coursera is one of the platforms I use very well and they provide professional courses and professional certificates that anyone could make use of. So uh, on first sight, what you see is that Coursera is uh, paid. I need to pay some money, like close to $50 before you can get your certificate. But I just want to show you guys how we can actually like go around that and get the courses you want to learn for free and get certificates through um, Coursera by using um, one of their programs. So uh, I'll share my screen first of all, and then I'll just uh, show you my Coursera platform. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, um, if you can see my screen now, here is my own Coursera like um, account. And if I go over to the completed tab, you would see a list of courses that I have completed and have like. Um, have like certificates to show for them. And there are quite a number, maybe five. And everybody can come. I found out about this. So like everybody can come here and just search for courses. I saw someone saying something about finding it hard to find data structures and algorithm courses on Python. So whatever it is that you want to learn and you need like a professional course where you can get a certificate and stuff like that, if that is what you want to do, you can just come over to Coursera and let me just use the example we, we saw, and I can see data structures and algorithms. And so if we, if we, okay, so I've selected for this, and then what you see is that to get the, um, to get the certificates normally, you're meant to pay some amount of money, about like $45 and stuff like that, or 49. But like to get courses for free, you can just come here, and then once you see financial aid available, just ensure that you don't enroll and then you can click on financial aid and then just continue to your application and then apply so once you apply for your financial aid within 15 days they'll give you the course for free uh, you just have to make sure that you finish it that's all so once you come here you can select all these and write what they say you should write here And then you can fill in all these. So um, I filled it a lot of times and got a lot of courses. So I'll just show you what I do. So from educational background, I I select some college because I'm investing, and my annual income is zero because nobody's paying me any money. And 
Uh, my status is that I'm a student and I can't afford to pay anything because I don't have the money. And then you can just fill in these two, these two essays. Um, yeah, 150 words minimum. It's not a lot actually. And I used to have a template and I can get it for you. But it's just, you just write 150 words of something that makes sense. And you don't need to put too much thought into it and you get your course. Here, you can just say no and if no why nobody takes student loans in this country so that's why just it's, it's not possible and then surely surely like most times once you apply for a financial aid you get it and you can have access to like a good course you can see these from another university some of them are from institutions like google ibm and stuff like that good so um down to what I have to, uh, what I have for everyone today is um, goal setting. So apart from just um, navigating, apart from just finding good resources to learn, um, you find out that a lot of people start learning something and then they stop or start learning something and then they don't learn much after a period of time or maybe they're just stuck in um, being a beginner. So that is because um, deciding to learn and then learning they are like two different things and learning needs like you can decide to learn and you might not follow through and you can decide to learn and you can follow through because like learning needs like consistent efforts so the moment you design to get into the tech space you need to consistently do something every day consistently learn every day consistently practice every day to actually get really good at the stuff so learning actually needs those consistent efforts and goal setting is one of the things that will put you on a very good um, path to on a very good path to actually like achieving your dreams so i'll share my slide now and start going through everything Okay, so let me. Okay, good. So, can everyone see the slide now? Yes. Good. So, um, goal setting. I'll try to quickly rush through because we are quite um, late on time. So, what exactly is a goal? I'm, I'm sure everybody here has had a goal of some sort at, at any point in time. So, um, what exactly is a goal? A goal is simply defined as like a desired result, a result that you want to achieve, something you would want to achieve. So um, why set goals? So we set goals for a reason. And like it's, it's popular consensus that successful people have goals that they work towards every day. So like um, setting goals is very important. So why should you set goals? So some of us, like maybe some people don't set goals. They just like try to like get through every tax every day. But like it's very important to set goals. And this is why goals give you direction and keeps you focused on where you want to end up. So if you have a goal, you are directed and you are like focused, you know exactly where you want to end up because there's like a constant reminder of a goal. Yeah, you, you won't find yourself jumping from the next thing that catches your eye to the next thing that catches your eye. So when I even started learning too, I was, I was just very intrigued by programming and I enjoyed it. So like a lot of things were catching my eye and I was just jumping. I didn't really have a set goal on whether I wanted to become a front-end guy, whether I wanted to become a back-end guy or designer or something. I just wanted to be a programmer. So like anything that comes my way catches my eye. Uh, today I'm using SoloLearn. I'm checking Java. Tomorrow I'm checking C++ somewhere. Next tomorrow somebody said something about uh, mobile dev and I'm there too. And some other time, someone said something about game dev. Someone said something about uh, machine learning, and I was just in like different places at the same time. So, if I had a goal in mind, if I had a goal in mind at that point in time that I wanted to become like a backend developer or something like that, or I wanted to learn Python, and it was Python that I was looking towards, I would not have like 
perched everywhere without focus. So goals give you direction and keeps you focused on where you want to end up. Um, so these are like questions you ask yourself. What are some things you love to achieve in the next few weeks or next few months? Uh, what are some things you hope to be or hope to achieve in the next few years? So these are important questions that you ask yourself when trying to to set a goal because goals is actually what keeps us focused and keeps us in line now so like there are two different types of goals there are short-term goals so these short-term goals are goals that can be accomplished in a very short time let me say i can say that um by the end of this week i want to have finished this book that's a short-term goal and it's something that can be completed in a week or you can say that by the end of this month i want to for I want to be able to uh, do about 50 push-ups. So that is a short-term goal. And then a long-term goal is that I want to become a successful software engineer, like a career. So like, it's a long-term goal because it's a career path. You are still in school now. You are going to finish school. You are going to go through like some progression, start work and stuff like that. And that is like a very, 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 very long-term goal because it's not something that can be achieved in like a week or some months or something. It's like it's a long-term plan. And there are also some forms of goals. So like those two types of goals I mentioned can come in different forms. So they are fixed goals. So fixed goals are goals that their outcome is based on like a specific date and time. Rhymes closely with the um, short-term goals. So the outcome... These are goals with an outcome that is based on a specific date and time. So um, fixed goals is like on Thursday, I want to have this, or on Thursday, I want to have completed this or done that. Good. And flexible goals are goals that have an outcome but no limit. So if you say, I want to get stronger, that is a goal that has an outcome. Yes, you'll be getting strong, but like the process of getting stronger, maintaining it is not something that has a limit. You keep on going to the gym for years if not all your life and working out and things like that and that brings us to the topic of like realistic and unrealistic goals so even when we decide to set goals there are still some mistakes that we can make we can set goals that are very 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 unrealistic uh um an unrealistic and a goal that is not even something that you should be doing well, some people do maybe they might be wanting to get better than someone like in the next in the next by the next two months or something and maybe the person they are talking about has been doing this thing for like four years or so so those kind of goals are unrealistic and then there are realistic goals that is something that is achievable or another type of unrealistic goal is what kind of example can i use i i want to okay we, we all have an idea of what is an unrealistic goal, like goals that, let me say, a goal like you don't even have the facilities to even pursue in the first place at, at this point in time, but you just set them. So like those kind of goals, you, you can't set a clear path on how you want to go about achieving them. And then realistic goals are goals that are well, you know, like curated. You are sure you already have a laptop, you already have a phone, you have internet access, and you want to learn something that way you can set like a kind of realistic goals. First of all, you have the facilities available to you. And secondly, you, you, the goal you are, you are setting is something that you can have in sight. So um, I want to get better at this, or I want to be an intermediate programmer in the next two or three months. So those are like um, realistic goals. So how do we go about setting our goals? How exactly do we set goals? we can use the SMART framework. So this SMART framework is a framework for setting goals. What should we follow when trying to set goals? And then the all the letters of SMART have their meaning and contribution to this framework. So the first one is to be specific. Make sure your goals are focused and identify a tangible outcome. So you need to be specific about what exactly your, 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 your goal is. Without like the specifics, your goal run the risk of being too vague. Um, I want to be like uh, a mobile developer, but like you're not. There are like different platforms for learning mobile and stuff like that. Whether you want to use React Native, what exactly you want to do, Flutter or things like that. So you have to be very specific when setting your goals. 
and then your goals have to be something that you can measure you can uh, set a time frame where you you want to finish doing these things and then at the end of the at the end of that time frame you can you it's something that you can measure and say okay i've made progress if i say that i want to lose weight i can measure this very efficiently by just climbing the scale so it is something tangible enough that i can always you know measure and then measuring and seeing your results no matter how small always like attributes to your success because it gives you like the push again we have like your goal should be attainable so just like i said you you need to your goal should be challenging you should push yourself to the limit but at this at the end of the is something that you should be able to attain to you have the facilities to 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 um chase such goals like my dad can come and say that he wants to be the best footballer in the world and start working towards it like his age you know they play football again and things like that so that kind of goal is not attainable it is out of scope it is it is not something that he should even think about and then your goal should be relevant to what exactly it is that you want to see about your development so uh, there are some goals that it might not benefit you in the long run like it, it, like it, it would not benefit you let me say you 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 want to be uh you want to be like a better um a better you want to get better at solving mathematical problems that that's that's your that's your that is what you want to do and then you are somewhere during that same period setting goals about how to become you know better at fifa somewhere else so you can see that that goal is not relevant to what what is like what you are trying to achieve at that point in time good so your goals should be like targeted and very relevant to what you're trying to achieve and then they should be they should be time bound that's the last one in smart which is the t they should be time bound so the goal every goal needs a target date so you need to set a target that you can constantly remind yourself it is measurable when you have a target with you like i've, I've taken courses where you have like a target so yeah like you must have completed this I took a course where like um just to make sure that everyone is serious with it and they complete it on time the course is free certificate is free and everything like that but if you don't complete that course within like the specified time you get to pay them 50 dollars so that was like some kind of like negative motivation to allow us to finish the course so and they made the course very very time, time like time bound so like they were targeted dates once I see that my date is coming close, I put in more focus, more time because like I'm usually very busy and stuff like that. So setting a target date, if your goals are time bound, it would help you to increase your focus or push you to do more at like certain times. Good. So with that, I'll go over to the Pareto principle. So um Pareto principle, just as you can see, is the 20%, 80 percent um, rule. And like from the picture, you can see something about 20% causes and 80% um, effects. So I'll tell you a bit about what made Pareto come um, what made Pareto come about this rule. So I think Pareto was an Italian man also, and then he reasoned it one day that like um twenty percent of the like the 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 richest people in Italy uh or at his at his place at that point in time were like just twenty percent of the um of the entire population but that twenty percent was what was controlling the country was what was determining the choices for like the remaining eighty now how do you apply these to go um to go certain so um it is it is um it is you can put it like this like there are goals and like opportunity costs that come with school so like there are goals that have like higher um level of importance and then they have like they have like um they have so like you might have a lot of goals okay let, let me put it like this like you might have a lot of goals to achieve and then 
out of those your goals maybe you have 10 goals out of those goals there are like this top 20 percent are like the most important ones these ones are the ones that will actually produce like greater impacts like i have a lot of goals like sometimes i have goals about learning a new framework sometimes i have goals about um getting a job and then i can see other goals like um um there are other goals at the time like building muscle um reading more books like more like live books or i can say something like a goal about getting faster at typing so if i if i do the opportunity course for those set of goals the important ones to me are like the most important ones to me the ones that will give me debated impact is of course getting a job and learning a new framework so out of all those goals i listed those are like the two like um most important ones to me because learning new framework will help me get the job and things like that so there are like these goals that you have that you can categorize as the 20 percent like they are the top 20 percent goals out of all your goals and these goals are the goals that will give you like maximum impact out of every every other thing you have set aside that you want to accomplish so um how do you discover these goals? So like a, a very good way to discover what your top 20% goals are. If you like, you can write down 10 goals that you want to achieve. Let's just, let, let's limit the scope to like daily goals now. You can write down 10 goals that you want to achieve in one day, then ask yourself if you could only accomplish one within the next 24 hours. Like if you could only accomplish one of those 10 goals within the next 24 hours, which one would it be? And automatically it will be the one with like the greatest impact of your life because that is that is what is it's be the one that will give you like the greatest impact like that is like what you do that you accomplish the most that day you feel more accomplished um that day so those are like the top 20 percent rules and um, goals so you should prioritize these goals and another thing that you should do is that you should work at your goals all the time so you should always have them in mind like throughout the day um one thing i do is that i i list out my tasks sometimes i list out all my tasks for the day i list out the important ones to um to complete and then i do them i do the um the less important ones and when i feel like i have achieved a lot for the day i can use the rest of the day to you know have fun but like the work comes first and then fun comes um uh, um next so Another thing that will help us or what Parate talked about is that you should resist um, the temptations to clear up small things first. So when you have goals that you, you set up, you should actually focus on like the goals, that top 20%, the ones that we have the greatest payoff. So those are the ones that you should give like your maximum efforts right from the start. So if you if you if you get into the habit of let me do these small, small ones first, then later I'll focus on the big ones. You you get used to doing like it gets too involved in little things and little things easily multiply. So it is it is advisable that you take out your top 20% goals and you focus on them and start from them and then resist the urge to, to um, start with the small things first. Also, have a goal that you're working towards every time, every, every time or a goal that you always have in mind that you're working towards every day it's kind of like streamline your direction so sometimes you just you know that you know what you want to be and then sometimes you just code that's how it is for me so I, I know what i'm working towards and then even though i don't feel like it sometimes i just code it or even though i don't have like a tax at some time because but i know that that's like the main thing so like when i don't know what to do sometimes i just pick up it like start just trying out some things or try learning something else about um what i do every day Good. So the templates for setting these goals, like a template that you can use to set these goals. This one's a very important one, and it's called like OKRs. So OKRs is like a goal setting template that even companies use. The company I worked on before used a big company like Google, Uber. They they they, they write a lot about OKRs and they used it. And OKR is not even new. Is one of the things that big companies use. Companies use them. And companies use them from inception to grow and things okay. like that so you can actually have like personal okrs and i'll go into explaining what okrs are 
you can have um, personal OKRs, even though like their most applicable form is like for a business or a company, but you can also have personal development OKRs and it would, um, it would guide you better. So we have like in OKRs, we have two things. We have objectives and then we have key, key results. So objectives are what you want to have accomplished. So what exactly do you want to have accomplished? And the key results are how you want to how you want to go about learning these things. So the first step in using an OKR is to you know choose your objective. Where do you want to be? What do you what exactly do you want to achieve? Then you define your key results. So your key results are how do you want to go about learning? Um, 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 how do you want to go about um how do you want to go about learning about this stuff or achieving this um, objective so an example can be like i want to learn about cloud and my key results would be my key results would be um um joining the google developers and um, google africa developer scholarship program that's what uh, paul showed in his own slide as guards it comes up every year and at this year's registration is over and they're almost about to even complete the cohorts and next year's one obviously be there and it's open to everybody as far as you're from africa so like a key result for trying to learn cloud would be to join the cloud track there so i just have it in mind that okay i'm going to join the guards cloud track and my objective is to learn cloud well and and my tag my key results will be joining and following in the cohorts and then my target will be getting that certificate because at the end of the day you can get the certificate and you might complete and still not get so the, the target there is to get that certificate that satisfies that what um a cloud um engineer or stuff like that so that is what okrs are all about uh this is an example of like a personal okr so you can see that this objective here is to become an a confident english speaker these are the key results so these are things broken down into like small small um small small um things that you can do consistently for a period of time to achieve um to achieve um that particular objective so we can have okrs that like span across the year in like quarters so we have three quarters so like in the first quarter you have your OKRs, so you have objectives that you want to achieve, and then you have processes to follow these objectives. And then at the end of the quarter, you're going to evaluate, check um, where you grade yourself on where, where you, what you actually did, what you actually accomplished with respect to your objective, if you actually cleared the objective, or if you didn't meet it, but um, you were close, and there are some things you want to change, and then you just improve on that structure and follow it throughout the next quarter. And then by the end of the year, you should be having something very, 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 very tangible uh, or goals that you have achieved a lot from. Good. So um, lastly, you just need to be very, very intentional about um, getting something very intentional, very motivated, and just keep going at it with like little consistent efforts try to be very, very like um, practical and direct. So you can add times, you can add times that I want to like, I want to wake up by six before by eight, I should have been done with this. And by eight, I'm starting this and things like that and things like that. So you can just direct like your goals and make sure you achieve them because it would actually, it's actually something that can change your life. Okay. Thank you for this insightful session. I really gained a lot. Um, I have a question. So, in setting my objectives, my OPR in the OPR um, math, can I have like three mm -hmm. objectives? It might not be related to each other that I want to accomplish within this objective. Yes, you can have like three, four objectives, but like just be like realistic about um, about it, if it is something that you can actually achieve during the quarter. So like when I was feeling an OKR okay for like a company I worked for, they they are like they have paid for like a Udemy platform for all employees, and they are like learning continuous learning for engineers is very compulsory. 
So you must set your learning journey. Apart from other things you're okay as about how you want to clear ticket and things like that, you must set your learning journey there. So you are free to put anything you, you can put there, but you can go ahead and put like five, six learning courses. And it might not be possible considering the load of work you have and load of work you have with the company and then the time left for you to even study courses. So it's good to just, even if you are setting multiple, make sure that it is something that is achievable if you push yourself. Thank you. So if there's any other question, you can drop them in the chat box or you can just unmute yourself. And you get in the chat box, then I'll let you know when to unmute and ask your questions. Good. So um, if you want to learn a bit more about the things I shared, you can just check these slides. Good, but I'll be entertaining questions though. So if you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask me. Um, um good afternoon, everyone. Um thank you, um DS um, GDSC you know, like for, for this same um, session. So um like my question is, um, I, I don't know if anyone can hear me. Yes, yeah, I can hear you. Can you. Okay. Um, um, my question is um this um, in, in setting goals, and um, the whole of the goal setting, I, I am knowing where you want to be, um, tracking the progress. How um, how do we avoid the situation of um this um. So, someone like a rabbit that is trying, that, that is in a wheel, and then the rabbit just keeps spinning the wheel. You know, someone like if if you have a spillover today, it is like a negative feedback, and then you'll be like, ah, no, I didn't achieve this thing today. I don't know if you understand that condition whereby you not feel like you are self sabotaging yourself, and then you just asking yourself like someone that cannot achieve that goal. I don't know if it's something common, but. I think it applies to me, something like that. So if I'm trying to understand you well, you are saying like you're always with this goal that you have been working towards and then every time you, you evaluate, like you find that you have not come to like you've not got into that target at that time and just keep on working towards it, towards it, towards it like that. Yes, and and they start feeling bad. Huh? Yes, and you start feeling bad. So yes, it's it's quite common. I have I have I have had goals like that before and they are even the ones that I had to drop because I just kept on spinning wheel and then I later shifted my focus. So um there are just two things in that kind of scenario that you have to check is that you might you might need to check whether you have to restructure your goals. So like if you find out that you the, you are spinning in a grabby hole or the grabby hole, like you said, um regards one particular goal, you might need to actually like check if that goal is actually attainable. So you need to perform that check whether that goal is actually attainable. Like you, you are sure that you have the resources to to you are sure that you have the resources and it's something that is in your reach. And even if it is not in your reach, you are sure that if you put your if you push yourself to an extent, it will become it will be in your reach. If you need to just like cross check that about that goal. And the next thing that you can also do is that if, if you've passed that check, it just means that you need to work on your focus and actually just like be more focused about um completing that particular thing thank you very much yeah i, I said thank you very much that's then that answers it you're welcome Okay, so thank you everyone for attending this session. I think that's all we have for today. I don't think there's any other question. Any other person wants to ask any other question. So um, thank you for attending this session and spending your time. I'm sure you've learned a lot from this session. And I want to say thank you for giving us time. And with this, I'll end the call. Thank you, everyone. Bye.
Bye.